Okay, so here's some other examples. Um, some of these are from different iterations of the uh, assignment. So you'll see some of them are just geometric shapes with other ones are more conceptually linked shapes. You're doing your project more conceptually linked and you're gonna see examples from the most recent quarter on Canvas. So you'll see the thumbnails and the finished product there. So really look at those for guidance. So in total, you're making 50 shapes, so as a minimum. So you can do more than 50, but you have to do 50 shapes. That's a requirement. How many of each shape is open? Okay, so like you can have 49 of all these other shapes, you know, whatever, and one that's just singular. Um, but I do find that they work best when there's like a quantity of each shape. So this really only works with quantity. The name of the assignment is 50 Shapes of Gray, which is an obvious play on the book title. You're only gonna use grays, you're not gonna use white or black. Anywhere in this video that you see white, it's actually a much higher key value um, than any of the other values, but it's not white. So you can't leave the white of the Bristol in any capacity. It has to be painted in some way because I want you to practice your painting. So you want to apply your acrylic paint as smoothly as possible. You know, if you're painting and it's not going on smooth, you can add a little bit of water to it and that will sort of help it to flow. Um, I want you to try to eliminate as much texture as you can because um, the texture becomes a design element. And I also want you to be really aware that with acrylic, it tends to dry darker. Um, and so the more water you put into it, the faster it dries. And once it's dried, it's really hard to rematch. So you want to make sure you always mix up like a really good pile of paint. Uh, so always mix more than you think you're going to need of a certain value. And then if you're afraid about it drying out while you use it, just take a paper towel and spritz it with water and lay it on top of the pile. And the paint will absorb the moisture and that will help keep the paint um, fluid enough for you to apply. So you're gonna paint the Bristol. It's gonna curl a little bit just because that's the nature of Bristol. Um, that's okay. You're only you're typically cutting out smaller pieces. One of the things that I want you to think about is the value you put in the background behind your design um, because it is one of the things that you have to create contrast. So here we have this dark gray here. We have like a middle value gray. Um, and that value shouldn't be repeated anywhere else. So whatever the background value is, it cannot be repeated in any of the other shapes because you're not gonna get the contrast that you need. So again, a reminder, y'all aren't doing geometric shapes, y'all are doing conceptually linked shapes, but these are great examples from earlier iterations of the assignment. So to a point away from a point, to a line away from a line. So this one is a conceptually linked one. This was about bicycles. Be aware that like students typically create a stencil and trace the stencils so that they can easily cut out their shapes. Think about what you have the capacity to do. You know, some people are really skilled with a knife, some people are less skilled with a knife. And so think about what you're able to do. Um, you know, you don't have to um, change the world every time you uh, create a project. Um, you know, the actual, activity of painting the Bristol, designing the design, uh, coming up with your conceptual link, all oh, that is really challenging already. How you um, create the cutout shapes, you know, think about what you're capable of doing and go from there. Um, this is a really great example. The student, I taught her a number of times, she was a very detail-orientated individual. You can see these little tiny details in um, her uh, design. So her concept was Paris. So all of these shapes are conceptually linked to uh, being in Paris. I actually had a little bit of an argument with her and said, don't try to cut out, you know, you're, you're thinking too detailed for such a small form. And she said, Professor Vaughn, I'm gonna do it. And I said, okay, make sure that you think about your quality. And she was like, sure, no problem. And she totally rocked it. Um, she had a lot of experience with X-Acto knives and she was just able to really do a really great job. 
Um, so you also see that one of the things here, like do you see how the units, the croissants um, are different sizes? That's okay. Just make sure they're still the same value. Okay, so you can't mix values, but you can mix sizes. Okay. Um, and so then you have, you know, here we have her, uh, her five units, the croissant, the perfume, the wine, the Eiffel Tower, and the Arc de Triomphe. And there's a really good sort of sense of the concentration here. So make sure that you're thinking about like, how are you best going to describe to the viewer what the concentration is. To do this, you need to do this cleanly and you need to do this really um, well so that we don't have to sort of interact with something like paint texture where there's not supposed to be texture because that would be difficult for us to sort of understand uh, the visual vocabulary you're trying to employ. As always, if you got any questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, and you know, you should already have a little bit of a feeling with this assignment that you have some knowledge about concentration from the last assignment. The big difference here, obviously, is that we're not doing digital concentration. We're making something by hand, and it's going to be a lot different. Um, if you struggle with the glue stick, then you feel free to change glue sticks. That's fine. Um, and as always, be careful with the X-Acto knife. <laughs>